Hello and welcome to the webinar, how to build bridges between different BI analytics solutions. You all might know that SAP offers a variety of BI analytics solutions. On the front end side, for example, we have tools like SAC, Lumira, Design Studio and so on. And the dashboards created in these applications are usually based on data models in the backend systems like BW or HANA. There are a lot of objects in the systems in general which are interacting with each other. For example, queries in BW, which are used as a data source in SAC, or for example, a calculation view in HANA, which is consumed by a composite provider in BW. Keeping track of those interdependencies can be complicated and comes along with a lot of effort. In today's webinar, I will show you how you can handle this complexity. My name is Malte Haring. I'm product owner here at Intelligence, and I will walk you through today's session. Let's have a look at the agenda first. So first, we will talk about the problems and challenges resulting from cross-system dependencies. And in a second step, I will then show you how our software solutions can support you to overcome these challenges. At the end, I will, as usual, provide some additional useful information and end this session. Okay, let's start with problems and challenges. This here is Thomas. Thomas is a BI developer who's working in an environment of different SAP solutions. For example, you can see here different objects out of different SAP systems. You have, for example, Lumira reports from Lumira. You have SAC stories from SAC. You have composite providers and ADSOs out of a BW system or a calculation view out of HANA. To work in this environment, Thomas uses a handful of applications like ZapGUI, Eclipse, Lumira, SAC or HANA Studio, for example, to analyze these objects. In case Thomas needs detailed information about each of these objects, he usually needs to sign in into each application individually. However, information on cross-system dependencies of these objects is not accessible so easily. So you can see here, these objects from different system can have relationships to each other. If you think, for example, about a SAC story, which is consuming in the calculation view in the HANA system, or a Lumira report, which is consuming a query or a composite provider straight away in the BW world. But exactly this dependency information is relevant for Thomas in his day-to-day -day work. For example, when he's implementing change requests, here, Thomas might like to know and understand the full impact when he's changing objects. For example, which dependent objects might be inconsistent after this change? Or which objects does he need to check after his change to not get inconsistencies in the systems? Or if we're talking about documentation, if Thomas would like to have a documentation to the full extent, meaning he would like to have a complete documentation of his application and therefore would also like to consider this, this dependencies, he would like to have a tool which is supporting him here. During BW for HANA migrations, it's also important to understand the dependencies. If you think of here, for example, about BW queries which are used in BO reports, and you would like to know which queries need to be considered during the migration project and which queries need to be moved into the new BW for HANA system, for example. So there is a lot of areas in which these dependencies are of a certain relevance to Thomas. Analyzing these dependencies with SAP standard tools comes along with high manual effort and takes quite a lot of time. And this is one reason why we developed our software solution, the Performer Suite. The Performer Suite combines four products in total, and today we will be talking about two of these products, the System Scout and the DocuPerformer. Especially the System Scout is providing functionalities which are addressing the previously mentioned challenges. But I will also show you some functionalities from DocuPerformer who also can support you in these cases. And therefore, I prepared a small live demo. So let's have a look into the Performer Suite. Let me quickly open the application and first of all, show you how the application is built up in general. Here you can see that with the Performer Suite, I can connect to different system types that are connected to my solution. So here, for example, we have several BW systems that I can connect to. 
I have two different BO systems, several HANA system, and also one SAC system. I can simply connect to these systems via double click. And what you can see then is on the left side, an entity tree, which allows you to select a certain object type for which you would like to see the objects in the system. So if I, for example, select queries, I will see all the queries of the system I'm currently connected to. The same is working for the other system types. So if I, for example, connect to a HANA system, I can simply select the object type I would like to see. And now I have a list of all my calculation views, for example, in the system. Let me show you how this dependency analysis is working in general in the Performer Suite. I can use, for example, these filter lines here on top to search for a certain object which I would like to analyze. So let's, for example, search for this calculation view here. And I would like to understand where it, did where it is used, where else it is used. So not only the usage in HANA, but maybe also the usage on BW's side. Um, I'm using the context menu to start my analysis. Here I have the option to select System Scout, and I can start the where used analysis. In the result list, you will see that the System Scout is not only checking the usage in HANA, as you can see here, for example, the usage in two different calculation views, but also in other HANA objects. But you can also see that I can for uh, HCPR DWU01. Let me show you how this looks from BO side, for example. So with a simple double click, I can connect to my BO system and do my where used analysis here. Um, I can simply select this op uh, option on the top. And here, for example, I can search for certain providers which are used in BO reports. So if I, for example, search for the composite provider VMM underscore HCPR001, I can start the analysis and get a list of all BO entities or reports which are basically using this HANA composite provider, for example, as a data source. But I can also even see references in coding, as you can see here. So I can simply check in which coding part this uh, HANA composite provider is referred to. It's that easy. OK, now that you have a general understanding of how this works, let me present you with a simple use case. Let's, for example, imagine that Thomas, our BI developer, receives a JARA ticket with a change request. Here we have it, and the change request has the following task. There is a business user who would like to enhance the SAC story purchase overview dashboard, which is currently missing the certain key figure. For example, the key figure volume of order item, or the technical name zero volume underscore AP. And the business user is requesting Thomas to enhance the SAC story and the SAC model with this key figure. Let's get to work. So what Thomas does, first of all, he opens the performer suite and he connects to the SAC system to get insights on the story, which is mentioned in the JARA ticket. Here, I can simply use the double click again to connect to my SAC system. As you can see here, I can select all my stories of the SAC system. Let's have a look at the story that is mentioned in the JIRA ticket. Therefore, I simply copy the technical name and write it into the filter bar. Let's have a look at the documentation first of all. Maybe the documentation will give us some insight on the data source of the story. Here you can see, ah, yeah, we have a chapter, basis of data, and the documentation says that the story data model of SAC is based on the query ZBO V01, RAP001 in system A4H. Let's copy this technical name for now and jump to the respective system. So now I'm connecting to the, my BW system. I will select queries as my entity type and I will copy it here. Now I can select my query and let's first of all have a look if this key figure is might be available in the query itself and it's just not available in the data model in SAC. Therefore, I can simply open the structure of the query.
the performer suite and the system scout are now going live into the system to analyze the structure of the query. And it, the application is conveniently displaying what the query is all about. So here I have my chapter key figures and I can already see, ah, okay, there are some calculated key figures, but the base key figure that the user is mentioning is not really available in the query. Okay, in the next step, Thomas would like to understand the data model below the query. Therefore, he can simply address the query here on top via context menu, and he can display the whole data flow below the query. Let's start this. And now the application again is going into the system and is getting me all the live information about the data model below this query. Here I can already see that the query is based on a HANA composite provider, ZPURV01. And I can also see that the composite provider consists of five ADSOs and there is a HANA calculation view involved. Okay. So maybe the key figure requested by business is part of the composite provider already. This way I would only need to enhance the query to provide the key figure to the data model of SAC. Let's check the structure of the composite provider and check if the again, requested key figure is available here. Again, the application goes live into the system and is getting me the structure of the composite provider. And now I can even easily search for certain key figures. So if I press control F, I get this search window and I could simply search for something like volume because that is the key figure which was requested in the, in the ticket. So you can see volume is not really available. Let's have a, another check. You can see how the search works, objects, um, with the keyword value are uh, available, but there seems to be no dimension or key figure with volume in its name. So we get our first insight that the key figure is not part of the composite provider and the composite provider needs to be enhanced by this key figure. Let's check the part provider of this composite provider in our data flow. So we have like four ADSOs here, and now I'm gonna show you how you can easily analyze all five of them by just one click. So I'm selecting all five and it again use the functionality analyze compare. And now the tool goes back into the system and is getting me the structure of all five ADSOs. Let's have a look. Aha, uh -huh, here we have it. Let me show you that it actually also uh, selected all five. You can see if I expand it here, I'm gonna see all the um, dimensions and key figures of the ADSOs. And again, I can use the search functionality to easily search for the key figure I'm interested in. Let's again search for zero volume. Now, nothing available here. So none of the part providers of type ADSO provide this key figure. The last option we have now is to check this calculation view in the HANA system. And again, I easily use the context menu and jump right into the HANA system to analyze this calculation view without changing an application, without moving from the ZAP GUI to the HANA Studio or using Eclipse with the BW modeling tools to the HANA modeling tools. I simply stay in the performer suite and the objects are available straight away. Also here, I can search for something like volume and there doesn't seem to be anything related to volume. Hmm. Okay, this is bad luck. The key figure is not part of the data model yet, but let's assume that we are able to enhance this calculation view with a requested key figure. What Thomas needs to do next is he needs to evaluate the impact that he does once he changes and enhances this calculation view. So he would like to know what other objects are, might be impacted by this change, by this enhancement of the calculation view. Let's start the way used analysis of this calculation view, first of all, to understand which objects need to be checked after our change. Therefore, I use again the context menu. I start the where used analysis. And now I get all objects which are related to this calculation view. And again, I'm not only checking the usage in other HANA entities, 
I'm checking also the usage in BW entities like this HANA Composite Provider. So these two objects might definitely need to be checked after the change of the calculation view. Thomas is not done by changing the calculation view. He would now also need to add the new key figure to this composite provider. And again, touching this object might lead to inconsistencies in other objects. So let's check where this composite provider is used. And by just one click, I can start the way used analysis. I can select where I want to check my usages. And I get a list of the complete usage of this entity in all other systems. Let's have a look. So first of all, I see the usage of the HANA Composite Provider in other BW entities. I get a list of all queries which are based on the Composite Provider. I get a list of the calculated and restricted key figures which are based on this Composite Provider. And by jumping to the next step, I can see the dependent entities on BO side. So the tool is actually giving me a list of all BO reports which are built straight on this composite provider. Very interesting insight that the SAP standard tools do not give you. And again, one more time, even in HANA, I can see, wow, there's an indirect usage in this calculation view of the HANA composite provider. By just one analysis, I have impacts in all three worlds. So now I'm sure, okay, let's check these objects after our change to see if they are still consistent or if they might need an adjustment. I mean, by adding a key figure, it's not too critical, but imagine the same case for removing a certain dimension or key figure from a composite provider. Here, you get to inconsistencies straight away. Okay. Now let's say that the enhancement of the calculation view was done and the key figure was added to this composite provider. The last thing that needs to be changed is the query itself. So we need to add the new key figure to the query. Let's have a look what kind of BO reports would benefit from this change. So we could simply show, show in the same data flow the BO objects which are based on the query. Now have a look at this. This is quite amazing, I guess, because now we have objects of three different SAP systems, HANA, BW, and BO, in just one picture, all the dependencies. And let's, for example, say we are enhancing this query, and there might be other business users which are using these Lomira reports, and they might also be interested in this additional key figure. Let's have a look which who is responsible for this Lumira report, for example. Therefore, I'm simply opening the commenting function of DocuPerformer, and I will have a look at the comment of the object. You need to know with DocuPerformer, you are able to comment each object individually in your SAP systems. And I can see in this comment here that there is a person responsible on business side named Alexander Kolmogotsev. So why not use this email to write Alexander in email hey, we are enhancing the composite provider and query with a certain key figure. Would you like to use this one as well for your Lumira report? It's that easy. Okay, perfect. So we now saw that it was easily possible to analyze our impact of the changes which we are doing to the calculation view, to the composite provider, or even to the query without switching the application. We did not need to open the Eclipse world. We did not need to open the ZAP GUI world. We did not need to open HANA Studio or SAC or whatsoever. It's just all objects combined under one roof. Okay, so let's say we changed all our changes and we can close the ticket. Now, what's also possible with DocuPerformer is I could now doc and create a documentation of this change request by simply selecting the changed objects and adding them to a so-called scenario. Okay, let's jump back to our presentation. So, what was the situation at first? The situation was that the BI developer, Thomas, was confronted with a lot of objects of, out of different systems with quite... Um, quite some dependencies between them. And the system scout was able to give Thomas a structured way of displaying 
and getting an insight into the dependencies. Let's sum up what the system scout was providing to Thomas. First of all, Thomas could use the system scout to get a cross system overview of the complete BI application. He was able to conveniently analyze the structure of multiple objects at once and use the search function to easily find or not find the objects he is searching for. Furthermore, he was able to perform a complete where used analysis to anticipate the impact of his change, and this to the full extent. That's how easy analysis can be in your SAP systems. Okay. Last of all, if you saw any feature which you would like to test in person on your own systems, feel free to register for a free trial via our website. That's it from my side. Um, thank you so much for your attention, and I hope to see you in one of our next webinars. Have a good day, and bye-bye. Ciao.